With the start of the tourist season approaching, you may be planning a trip to Germany, so I've put together a few pieces of advice for you. Although, actually, most of this is probably going to be useful even if you're going somewhere that is not Germany. I was planning, by the way, to talk about the new public transport ticket, the Deutschland ticket, that will be launched on the 1st of May, but there are so many important details that haven't been finalised yet that I wouldn't be able to tell you very much about it. But I do have a couple of tips that should be useful for you, starting with your luggage and how to increase your chances of leaving the airport with the right suitcase. Because if your case isn't particularly distinctive, then picking it out from all the other lookalike cases can be a bit difficult when you're tired, jet-lagged and in a hurry. A simple solution is to get a colourful piece of ribbon or string to tie around the handle of your case. It doesn't have to be big, uh, actually to be honest this is probably a bit too big, uh, just as long as it's easily recognisable, securely tied and won't tear. And it's also a good idea if you're travelling by coach, which is another form of transport where everybody's cases are thrown together. Also surprisingly useful if your suitcase is new or borrowed and you're not confident you'll still be able to recognise it after 8 hours on a plane. My next tip is don't rely on Google Maps. Now I'm not saying don't use Google Maps, I'm saying don't rely on it. It's just not always very accurate. I've also heard stories of it sending cars down roads that don't exist and cyclists along routes that are prohibited for cyclists because they're just too darn dangerous. But where it really sucks, at least in Europe, is for public transport. It's just not built for that. Now, if enough of you say that you want it, I can make a few videos explaining how I find my way around without using my phone. But for this video, let me just say that Google Maps can help you get your bearings and work out where you are and what direction you need to be walking in. But for public transport, if you don't want to download and install a separate transport app for every city that you visit, the DB Navigator is probably your best option. Although it really is geared towards rail travel, it can give you directions on local public transport, including buses, trams and U-Bahns all over Germany. And yes, you can switch it to English. More than that, if you give it your credit card, Card details, you can use it to buy train tickets and local public transport tickets in some areas, although not all. And the Deutschland ticket that I mentioned earlier will also be available on this app. And by the way, no, Deutsche Bahn is not sponsoring this video. But if somebody at Deutsche Bahn's marketing department happens to be watching this... Now, of course, these days people tend to travel with a lot of electronic equipment that needs charging, especially if you're somebody like me with a phone, two cameras, a laptop and a smartwatch. In Germany, the mains outlets look like this and they take plugs that look like this and this. And this is pretty much the standard in most, although not quite all, European countries. If your country has the same plugs and outlets, then you have nothing to worry about. If not, you will need an adapter, which you should buy in your own country before you travel. Uh, this is an adapter that I need for Switzerland. It plugs into a Swiss outlet and then my German plug plugs into it like this. Now, obviously, if you're visiting Germany, you'll need an adapter that plugs into a German outlet. But if you have a lot of devices, and that could easily be the case if there's two of you, you may run into some problems. You may have enough adapters, but your hotel room may not have enough outlets. Not to worry, just bring a small power strip. Now you only need one adapter and one outlet. Mains electricity in Germany, and Europe in general, is at 230 volts. But if you're from North America, your devices may be more used to running at 110 volts. Now, fortunately these days, that's less likely to be a problem. Modern portable devices usually come with power supply units who will run at any mains voltage, and this is usually indicated like this. I have also started seeing USB charging ports on buses and trains, at airports, and other public spaces, hotel rooms, and so on. But while that is very convenient, you should be very careful about plugging your phone into a random USB port. Fortunately, I do have a secret weapon, and it's this. Now, this looks like a normal USB cable, but what's different about it is that it has no data wires down which a virus could be sent, 
only power wires. You should be able to pick up a power only USB cable from a reputable retailer for a reasonably small price. Alternatively, you can get something called a data blocker, which looks like a small adapter and basically it just has no data wires. And those are the tips that I have for you. If you have any more, then please do put them in the comments. Apart from that, happy traveling. It should be, oh God, I can't concentrate. Okay, uh, I hope it's not actually being picked up by my microphone, but I've got a neighbor that's been using a buzzsaw all morning and is still using it and it is incredibly loud. And I'm having real difficulties concentrating.